started. Um, good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you happen to be when you're viewing this. Um, I'm Greg Tucker. I'm the executive director of CSDMS and uh, thrilled to welcome you to this CSDMS webinar. Um, today, we are delighted to have Dr. Davide Vanzo from ETH Zurich in the Computational Fluid and Morphodynamics Group. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just hand over the floor to Davide to uh, present to you Basement, a not so basic simulation environment for river process modeling. One quick logistical note um, if you can hold questions to the end, and then when we get to the question and answer phase, we'll ask you either to use the raise hand feature in Zoom or to type your question into the chat. So without further ado, Davide, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Greg. And thank you for the CES DMS community for inviting me to give in this webinar. And yes, in this uh, hour or less than one hour, I, I'm, I'm happy and excited to describe and introduce a bit to you what is basement about and i would like to start resolving the title directly so uh, this is the agenda for, for 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 the meeting i would simply go uh through setting the the, the tone and explaining uh, the type of physical processes we can simulate with basement present some interesting features that sometimes are overlooked by user, that we have this feel, feeling, uh, a set of basement tools that comes together with the software. Uh, I would like to present a bit what we are doing in terms of research with the software and finalize with some dissemination uh, aspect of this project. Again, to resolve the title, uh, why is I, I call the, the presentation a not so basic simulation environment because actually basement, the, the, the name was born as basic simulation environment. In the years it grows and it got way more complicated than uh, what we expect. Um, so as I mentioned, it started as, let me find the Laser pointer. It started as a numerical software for simulation of either and more for dynamic uh, processes in rivers. And with the years and the development, we add way more um, element. The initial idea, and that it's still uh, the, the, the main idea of the project, is to provide a powerful yet free and user friendly tool to facilitate practitioners, students, as well as scientists in uh, setting up and performing uh, river modeling uh, analysis. The project started in uh, 2002 at the Laboratory of Hydraulics, Hydrolos Hydrology and Glaciology, FAWAV at ETH Zurich, and it was always developed in this institute. Um, what is today basement, it's more than just hydromorphodynamics. So we, it's a tool that can support research and application in different domains. And here I highlight three, uh, three main components. So uh, hydrodynamics, sediment transport, and morphodynamics, but also uh, application towards what we call eco-hydraulics application and research. So habitat and vegetation dynamics, just to make an example. Uh, rolling back, I would like to present ourselves. We are uh, the FAWAV Institute, the Laboratory of Hydraulics, Hydrology and Glaciology, a uh, very old and historical institute of ETH. Uh, we do research in, in, in several domains spanning from really um, hydraulic research and on air and flow, uh, air and water flows. Uh, we have a strong know-how on hydropower, um, but also we, 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 we do research in the domain of numerical modeling for in different uh, subject, but also we do experiment, for example, in eto-hydraulics with a live fish in our lab. And we conduct the research with different infrastructure and methods. And I think one of our also uh, uh recognized skill is the 
capability of also a group and join and, and link different uh, approach and methods in our research. If we narrow down to the computational fluid and morphodynamic groups, uh, we conducted based on applied research in hydraulic and environmental engineer. And one of the main uh, scope of the group, it's also the development and maintainment of the basement pro project. But we do way more. We have a, we have a quite a large group uh, funded often by a research project, but we have some stable support in terms of software and research engineer. And the project itself is mainly funded by the Swiss Federal Office of Environment and maintained and developed by our group. If you want to know a bit more, we have all this information regarding the development also in our web page. The project, as I mentioned, started in 2002 and it grows with the years. We have, there, there were several milestones uh, along this path, but as you see, uh, we have modules and components appearing uh, through the years. And uh, today I would like to present you an overview of the version four, that is the current version, and presenting some of the more relevant modules of this version. Uh, just to um, list some main features, if you are interested in, in, in installing, let's say, the, the software. Uh, right now we have a version for both Windows and Linux based operating system with a GUI, but also a command line interface. Uh, right now, this is the general framework or, or, or structure of the code. So we have uh, a unified software and that is divided in two main submodule. I want to highlight that I will, during the presentation, I will present some features of the base MD, the multi-domain version that hosts uh, several submodules, but also some of uh, some features of the base HPC, high performance, high performance computing version, uh, where that it's able, enabled to, to run on GPU cards. And of course, we are still developing uh, several features of these uh, modules. Uh, Basement is not open source right now. Uh, so the software is a freeware, is, uh, so you can download and use for free also for commercial purposes. But we have some, some other tools connected to the project that are open source. It's used for project and research activities, and it's receiving growing atten attention in the, the last years, uh, especially for, from private companies, but also public research institutes. And if, if we now have a look to who is using Basement, of course, our main, uh, uh, our, the, the main stake of users are from Switzerland, but we have several users in the German speaking part of Europe, Austria and Germany, and also in Italy. So uh, going to the more interesting part, just to set the, the tone, which are the physical processes and scales we are investigating, we are sitting in, in the, at the spatial and temporal scale of 2D and 1D morphodynamic processes, what does it mean that we um, we can we we simulate uh, processes on the uh, temporal scale of some uh, decades and some kilometers, uh, with especially when we use the 1D version of the model, up to uh, event scale. Uh, so flood uh, flood event scale processes that occur within days, hours, or weeks in a, in a more confined or limited um, spatial scale of some hundreds meter of, or some kilometers, where we can use a way more accurate and detailed uh, approach to to simulate <clears throat> river morphodynamic processes. When we talk about 1D uh, version of basement, we have a cross-section average 
uh, we use a cross-section average approach, so similar to um, ECRAS, that it's a well-known um, hydrodynamic model, hydromorphodynamic model in the, in, in the community. You can uh, run, of course, extensive in terms of spatial extension flood risk analysis. And if we are talking about morphodynamic processes, it's suitable to to simulate and, and, and evaluate slope adjustment, or for example, the response of um, river system to uh, sediment injection or a sediment deficit in terms of adjustment of the slope or modification of the crane size composition. So this is suitable for more large scale, long scale application. There is an entire uh, sector of application that is more suitable to be investigated with a 2D depth average approach. Um, here, it's just to plot some, um, some example of Swiss river where uh, we have such morphological variability or the formation of some interesting morphological structures such as here uh, with alternate bar where you need at least a 2D depth average approach to, 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 to investigate uh, in an accurate way um, hydromorphodynamic processes that scale. And this is also the natural scale for many other processes uh, spanning from morphodynamic one, but also to eco-hydraulic processes and focusing on habitat dynamics, for example, or uh, transport and fate of contaminants. And this is also often the scale where uh, river restoration project take place. So um, reach scale of some hundred meters. Uh, to, to, to understand uh, a bit, I, I promise these are the only two slides with some, some equations, but at the end of the day, basement solves a set of partial differential equation. What we are uh, solving is uh, initial and boundary values problem where we uh, evaluate in time conservation of some uh, quantities. Uh, and then we have a set of multiple experimental closure relation to um, to solve our problem. In the easiest way, I present here the 1D uh, sum Venant equation. These are equations for the conservation of the liquid phase and the momentum. So uh, to simulate the behavior of water in our, in our physical domain, we, we, we solve this set of partial differential equation provided input boundary condition and some internal boundary conditions. Uh, we do the same for other quantities of interest. So when we uh, want to solve uh, the evolution of the bottom, so for the morphodynamic model, we make use of the external equation that simply is a partial differential equation uh, stating the conservation of the um, sediment in our domain and so on and so forth. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, all the modules uh, rely on, on the solution of partial differential equation uh, system, mostly of hyperbolic type. So then we have other module for uh, the resolution of uh, sediment sorting, so multi-grain multi simulation. We have a module for uh, subsurface flow where we uh, numerically integrate the Richards equation and so on and so forth. Why I presented this, this brief uh, overview of the governing equation, just to say that uh, this is the, the type of uh, governing processes are linked to how we numerically solve them. Uh, and we, we solve uh, this governing equation with a, a finite volume, in a finite volume framework with explicit integration in time. This has, uh, of course, um, pros and cons, and I have I add here other uh, features that are relevant when simulating uh, river processes. 
uh, especially in an alpine context. Why this? It's important to remark because using explicit integration, we are we are bounded by the choice of the integration time step. So uh, this is just to remark that um, when uh, solving one the one D uh, e equation or one D approach, we can uh, have time step integration of scaling with with seconds. So we can easily uh, run a simulation for multiple years in a, with standard workstation. But bear in mind that when when we go with the 2D uh, as as thumb rule, we have integration time step of smaller than one second. That it's it can create a, it's surely a barrier um, for long term uh, simulation in in 2D in a 2D framework. That also what motivated us to, to, to spend some uh, uh, quite some effort in, in design uh, a GPU ready version of basement for, for some application. So that's it with, with the e equations was just uh, uh, I think an important uh, remark. And, and now I would like to to give um, a brief overview of some interesting features that we have in basement that we feel sometimes are, are not well um, used or exploited by, by user. And one, one feature is the possibility to coupling different type of domain. So um, with basement, you can design and couple 1D domain in a, in a, in a different type, uh, so with one-way coupling, two-way coupling, uh, and also one one D domain with two D domains, and and so on. You can create actually and reproduce and simulate big uh, network or or entire basing uh, scheme, um, basing uh, networks. Um, having the advantage that whenever you have a simple channel that you can simulate with the 1D approach, you can, you can actually use the 1D version and save a lot of computational time. And we have different strategies to coupling. Or you can also coupling as in this picture, simulate the, the, the main channel of your compound channel or confined channel with the 1D approach and couple just the flood plane in case of you, of you want to simulate the, the natural hazard or or the um, or in case of flooding a second uh, feature is what we call base extern that it's a, a data exchange protocol during runtime that allows for coupling between basement and uh, an external program, for example, it was tested and used for the, the base sub, so the simulation of subflow, uh, subsurface phase flow uh, module. And you can, there are different ways you can exploit this this feature. In one way, so uh, a one way uh, coupling, so you provide input or you derived output from a basement, for a, from a running basement simulation, or uh, a two-way coupling, where you can, uh, during runtime, provide and fetch data to to the basement simulation. Even though I have to mention that it's this is experimental, so it requires still some coding. Then we have also a flow controller where you can control some variables. Uh, so you can manipulate some variables, and this is useful to simulate, for example, uh, hydraulic structures are, uh, along your um, uh, simulated river. And the, the last uh, relevant feature is that we have a dedicated module for uh, that runs on, on GPU cards, so graphical process unit cards, where uh, we were able to obtain uh, very high speed up values up to of up of to order of magnitude higher than um, 
serial uh, simulation. And what does it mean or what does it allow? Uh, for example, to account for uncertainty in flood modeling or other type of applications. So um, in this type of study, we, we use, we, we make use of the, this accelerated version to run thousands of simulation of uh, breaching um, hydrograph. And so, so we didn't simulate just one, uh, evaluate just one result, but 3000 uh, simul uh, simulation result. We build a probabilistic flow map so you can uh, work towards the generation of probabilistic floods map directly by, by, by generating thousands of simulation output. And in this case, we had a, the single simulation on a standard workstation with the GPU card. Uh, the single simulation computational time was of 36 seconds and we ran 3000 runs. And we evaluate that with the standard non-GPU version of basement, the, the total computational time would have been uh, 200 days and it was at the end only uh, 30 hours. So it really opens door for, for application that were not possible with standard uh, machines. A bit uh, an overview now, I would like to mention not the basement software, but some tools that we develop in order to, to create uh, a user-friendly workflow for, for for the usage of the of the soft of basement, um, the workflow for the usage of the software it's quite standard for for this type of uh, environmental software. Let's say so you create uh, um, so you have a pre-processing step where you have to prepare the the numerical the computational mesh so having a topo topography data transform in some way in your computational mesh and then prepare some time series. You run your numerical simulation and then we have um, a post-processing phase. To help with that, we have several tools. So for the pre-processing, we have an in-house developed plugin that works on QGIS. It's an open source project. I will mention briefly how it uh, I show briefly how it works. We call it base mesh and it helps supporting the creation of the computational mesh. You can also run as a um, command line interface tool. It's the Python module. You can work uh, either way with it. And for the post-processing, again, you can visualize the results in QGIS via the mesh layer uh, module that now it's in fully implemented in QGIS. And I think it was originally and support developed and supported by Crayfish company. But you can also use Paraview or uh, some Python script that we provide to post-process your data. When we talk about 1D uh, hydromorphodynamic modeling, mo model, we have 1D grid editor uh, directly available from the GUI of the software that it's in some way uh, similar to in a very basic form to 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 across uh, geometrical handling of, of the cross section let's say or uh, we have a script to generate some simple 1D geometry uh, from common bar, a common line interface that we call it base chain, or we have also a converter from uh, ECRAS geometry file to uh, basement uh, geometry file. With regards to 2D um, mesh, so 2D computational mesh, we have as anticipated Base mesh that it's an open source uh, plugin, and 
you you can you can generate with a nice uh, with a nice workflow and visual. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's a via graphical user interface. You can generate your computational mesh. Uh, we re it works well with relatively small meshes. So let's say 100k smaller than 100k computational uh, cell. If you have if you have a really large application, millions of cell, uh, we realize it's way more efficient to use the command line interface tool. But the, the, under the hood, the, the, the approach for the generation of the computational mesh is actually the same. And just to mention some, uh, I think, interesting features of base mesh, you can generate your mesh by interpolating elevation from multiple sources. So if you have river cross section, but also a DTM, you can put together everything and uh, um, use different elevation information to build your, to build up your uh, computation, numerical computational mesh. Now it's not the base mesh feature, but now there is a, in QGIS, there is a native 3D visualization. So you can build up your computational mesh and uh, visualize in a 3D fashion straight after and check for, for quality, let's say. And also visualize the, the, the MAT ID. So the different la, uh, material index you assign to your mesh that are linked then to uh, hydromorphodynamic parameters later on in the model setup. So you can also uh, color with um, identify with different color this material index. If we move to the post processing, so once you have run your simulation, you can easily visualize the results in a very, very convenient way with that back again with QGIS. Uh, there is this uh, Crayfish plugin that it's very convenient to visualize 2D information, but also trace to, to, to define cross section. So you can visualize your result. For example, here we, you have this cross sectional uh, profile of the velocity and export a different type of map for visualization and presentation. Uh, I mentioned also Paraview. It's a more powerful tool, let's say, dedicated in general to computational fluid dynamics uh, solvers. Uh, you can also uh, directly read the basement results there and manipulate a lot of variable, do a lot of post-processing, and, and, and and so on and so forth. Or we provide also some uh, script to help the user extracting, for example, data over time uh, at, at provided uh, coordinates. We are also happy to, of course, to welcome other suggestion and script from, from ex experienced user. Another module that uh, we released just uh, some months ago, we had a, a, a publication, so it's fully available. Uh, also the Wiki and, uh, and the tutorials for this module is BaseVec. It's a Python package uh, that it's coupled with Basement that help uh, to, to model uh, vegetation, riparian vegetation dynamics coupled with river morphodynamics. So uh, we, we try to model the effect that vegetation, riparian vegetation has on the flow, at, but also on the sediment transport. And also accounting not only for the effect of above ground uh, vegetation, so the standing canopy here in the picture, but also the role of root on the cohesion and the resistance, if you want, of the of the sediment. Just an overview how it works. Uh, the, the Python module take care of all this uh, workflow, where you see from this simple sketch, we have some steps that are handled via a, a Python script in the module, and then automatically some basement simulation are 
call and execute it. And with this module, you, you can uh, simulate cycles uh, and a number n of cycles of vegetation growth phase, where we where we assume that uh, we have low flow condition, so riparian vegetation can grow on the bare soil, and then we have flood phase when we where we have natural or artificial floods that. Uh, cover the vegetated part, we have the interaction between vegetation and uh, morphodynamic processes. And then we can simulate evolution in terms of n cycles. And here is just an example of a, of, of a test we have done on the Alpine Rhine. So you see the, the here it's the delineation of the vegetation patch at the end of the investigated period. And here in the, with, the, with the, the color map, you see the simulated vegetation at the beginning of the simulated period at, at the end after the flood, and we match fairly well the, the observed distribution of the vegetation. Um, so these were uh, some uh, some tools that comes uh, that, that we, we develop and provide within the basement project. Then in the few uh, next few slides, I would like to 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 share some highlight of which of some type of research we are doing uh, currently and in the last years with basement, just to give an example. So in general, as I mentioned, we have three pillars or three main topics: hydrodynamics, sediment transport, but also habit uh, ecohydraulics, let's say habitat and vegetation dynamics, and and we work continuously through this research project also in uh, continuous uh, on a continuous development of the of the software uh, just some example we 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 use also the 1d uh, approach so what basement 1d version for uh, for research purposes here for example we have one uh, a phd student that is working on reservoir sedimentation management using um, with the 1D model to simulate the advancing uh, depositional front on a reservoir and to, and to understand uh, the, 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 the impact of uh, reservoir sedimentation on the energy store, but also, for example, uh, the, the, the potential benefits of using or not using or how to use uh, sediment bypass tunnel and also evaluating the, 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 these dynamics of sediment or reservoir sedimentation under climate change condition. Another example, very, uh, if you want a small scale application or conf local scale application is uh, the failure of embankment dams uh, here we use, of course, the 2D version, and you can see the how we we we, we are uh, here. This the PhD student is conducting a composite, if you want, uh, analysis or investigation, coupling um, experimental uh, simulation that you can see here in the first video and uh, numerical simulation. Let me, okay. So here you see the lab experiment of this dam failure on the one side and on the bottom, you can see the, the numerical simulation conducted with basement on the same uh, setup. Another example again, uh, here now at a, a larger scale, a rich, a rich scale of some kilometers, it's um, the, the role uh, or the dynamics of fine sediment on floodplains um, and the interaction of fine, sed fine sediment with vegetation uh, in, in, in floodplains. So in case of river restoration, we can imagine that we, we might have different vegetation uh, configuration in our uh, restored floodplains, and we wanted to investigate uh, 
how these are affected by how sediment fine sediment transport is affected by by different vegetation configuration on the floodplains and to do this we had to implement of course a suspended sediment transport module but also a turbulence module uh, to catch this shear layer that it's uh, present at the interface between the main channel and the and the floodplain so again a lot of development to, re to reach this this uh, re research application and here just a nice video to where we, where we were testing our uh, turbulence model uh, module with a, with a fairly easy application at, at the end the goal as i was anticipating it's to understand here we see the simulation of uh, fine sediment deposition along this floodplain so we, here we have the aerial images uh, and here we overlay the distribution of the uh, of the sedimentation of fine sediment after, with the with the simulation another type of application or research it's uh, this is a, an example of another large scale application in the sense that we have a computational mesh of 3 million cells here we were investigating trying to reproduce a tsunami lake uh, generated by, the, by an earthquake in Lake Luzerne and we simulate the landslide that generate this this tsunami by instantaneous removal of sediment in in different region of the lakes and we were uh, we were interested in understanding how this wave propagate uh, in, the, in, the, in the on the shoreline and in the in the towns and villages that are uh, close to the lake shore and again so to do this you you need a certain type of uh, algorithm for wet and dry and 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 uh, a wave uh, advancing in, in in the in the dry soil and of course this was this type of application again was possible because of the gpu version otherwise it would have been uh, computationally too demanding to simulate this type of um, problem. Moving to the last type of application. So if we talk about more eco-hydraulics, here we have an example where we simulated surface temperature um, dynamics uh, at fine scale. So here we are in a small flood plain in a, in a Swiss river and you see your fluctuation of discharge in blue due to hydropower production. And you see in red, the, the fluctuation of temperature where we have natural fluctuation plus this sharp uh, spike due to uh, hydropower production. So we, we implemented the surface heat exchange module where we can simulate the dynamics of water temperature in our reach. So in this, uh, map here you see water depth how it evolves during the simulated weeks and here the water temperature how it changed and the, vari the variability of water temperature comparing the main channel and the secondary channel of this small floodplain and this is of interest for for many um, ecological processes that can occur in this type of floodplains uh, another eco hydraulic application habitat the evolution of habitat dynamics it's we started some years ago investigating uh, developing a, a mesoscale patch delineation algorithm we call base meso it's still uh, under development but uh, basically the idea is to identify mesoscale patches with some uniform uh, characteristic starting from uh, the simulation, hydrodynamic simulation uh, results. So with with some uh, basically clustering uh, algorithm to identify these mesoscale patches. And I want to mention also that basement its uh, basement outputs can be uh, read and and directly use 
with Habit and it's a habitat modeling tool that was developed by colleagues uh, and scientists in France from INRAE and OFB and ADF uh, companies and institute. And we, were, we, we used also for uh, this coupling with this tool for some uh, habitat dynamics evaluations. So last, last uh, uh, few slides. Uh, so I, I, ho I hope it was a, a short but, and fast, but yet clear overview of, of some components of basement, how we uh, spread the word and disseminate our product. Uh, we have some events and some tools to, to do that. Uh, in terms of connection with the users, we have an un annual user meeting. Uh, since COVID, uh, it, it turned to be in a hybrid mode. So you are welcome also to participate in the next one. Generally, it's in around February, uh, January, February, every year. We have a user forum where the, 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 the user can exchange or pose some question, exchange experiences. And, and post and report bugs and, and suggest feature development. We organize a doc workshop and we have a, a quite, a, we, we put quite some effort in education. So we have uh, two courses at ETH Zurich where we introduce the, the, the software, but also in general, the approaches for river morphodynamic modeling. And we put also a lot of effort in uh, to, to generate a very extensive uh, set of manuals, test cases, and tutorials that are all available, of course, for free in, in the in our website. And to conclude, uh, what's next um, in the basement project? We are continuously working to integrate new features. Uh, we are now trying to expand uh, all the, uh, the, the capability of GPU accelerated modules. So to add more features in that modules, because we, we think it's really relevant to, to, to break down this computational uh, barrier for 2D applications. Uh, one of the things we are working and planning is uh, expanding uh, or porting the documentation as a wiki page to to make it more even more user friendly the interaction uh, the, the interaction with the documentation for the users uh, we are considering uh, also creating some libraries API interface to 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 run also the the base uh, GPU version. Uh, with uh, with external and to couple with external uh, programs, and so we are also interested in, in the in the solution proposed by this community. And we, we don't have a date, but but uh, it's 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 there on the table. Also, sooner or later, the discussion uh, if uh, if to move the entire project as open source. Uh, at this link, you can find all what I presented and more and more information. So with this, I thank you very much for your attention and I'm very happy to take your question if you have. Thank you so much, Davide. That was really fascinating. It's, it's clearly a package with a lot of capabilities. Um, we're open now for questions. You can either um, raise your hand in the, uh, you go reactions on the button on the bottom of your screen and click raise hand, or you can uh, post a question in the chat and I'll keep an eye on that as well. And I guess while we're waiting for people to collect their thoughts, I'll, I'll ask a, a quick one. I'm, this is a little bit in the weeds, but I understand that one of the challenges in fluvial morphodynamic modeling is how you handle the lateral component of sediment transport that is lateral relative to the main flow direction that's driven by gravitational forces, say down a 
you know, down a bank or something like that. How, how was that handled in basement? Uh, okay. Yes, it's a re relevant process. We have uh, two corrections for the, for the sediment transport direction. The one, as you, as you, I think you were, you were uh, mentioning too. Sorry for the background noise. There is a truck passing by. Um, one, one is the um, correction for the uh, transversal slope, so gravitational component. Uh, we use an implementation that it's, uh, it was proposed by Ikeda and Talmond, and there are several, several approaches. Uh, so we have this. We account for this correction in the Exner equation that it's proportional to the to the to the slope to the local transversal slope and to the intensity of the sediment transport. And then we have also the uh, second correction that actually counter counter counteract this that it's uh, the spiral flow correction. So in case of a bend uh, or, or a strong curvature of the flow, we have this spiral flow correction that scales with the radius of curvature. So you can nicely simulate evolution of uh, meanders, for example, or point bar, of the position forming at the inner bend or inner part of the, of the bend. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from on the chat from Amin Askarinejad. Thanks for the presentation. I wonder if the soil mechanics processes during breaching, for example, unsaturated slope instability due to uh, local toe erosion are simulated. Oh, I know uh, right now, uh, I, I hope I don't provide the wrong answer, but um, right now we have some um, gravitational instability driven by uh, some, uh, uh, slope angle. So we have uh, a slope uh, angle of failure for dry condition and, and wet condition. So we have a, a certain number of, of uh, uh, different threshold for, for the slope collapse. And this is how we, we evaluate the slope instability. Uh, the local toe erosion uh, explicitly no. But I don't. Maybe I'm not sure I got the the correct question. But I hope it answered. Otherwise, I'm I'm happy to to have a follow up question on this. So you see, there's a question then from Luis Lopez. Thanks for the presentation. Is it possible to model an estuary? Oh, well, uh, let's say that the, the, the Basement was developed for alpine conditions, so uh, I'm I'm sure there are uh, project and software that were developed in lowland rivers and estuary in context that are more advanced uh, in that regards. So um, not out of the box in the sense that we don't have a dedicated module for uh, wave or or oscillating boundary condition that you need actually to 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 simulate estuarine. So uh, I, I think we are missing some dedicated boundary condition for that. You can in some way have uh, you can force the model to do it, but I would say that it was not designed for 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 that context. And uh, it uh, yeah Switzerland is also a lock land country so we we have less concern with estuarines, let's see. Sea level would have to rise quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a question from Daniela Tonina. Um, very nice presentation for dissemination. Have you thought about video tutorials? Yes, we we thought and discussed a lot, but the 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 the, the, the bottleneck is the manpower in the sense that. Um, the project, uh, we, we have a limited funding and this funding, it does not cover most of the efforts for dissemination. So we, we don't have the capacity at the moment to, to, to produce uh, nice and, and, and good video tutorials, but it's there, it's, it's a recurrent topic. 
Um, let's see. So from Maureen Gretner, thanks for the interesting presentation. Would you recommend using this tool to analyze the influence of bigger boulders on the water flow in rivers? Oh, uh, there uh, it's a uh, uh, yes and no. <laughs> it, it depends. But I would say that if you can, uh, if you have, uh, this is depending on your, of the quality of your topographical data. If you have a high quality resolution scan where you can identify and define your big boulders, I would say, yes, it's fairly, you, you can use a very fine computational cell, so you can really identify the boulders in your in your computational mesh. And yes, but I would say it's more related to the quality of your of your uh, input um, topography. And then from Ludovico Agostini, thanks for the nice presentation. What are the main upstream boundary conditions for sediment transport? Oh, this is, it looks like a, 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 a test, but, <laughs> but uh, so we have a equilibrium condition. So uh, basically uh, you, 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 you ensure, you ensure that you don't have morphological changes at the upstream boundary condition. Uh, you can have sediment transport capacity condition, or you can provide a, a sediment uh, value, sediment hydro or sedimentograph. So you provide a certain amount of uh, transport rate at, at your upstream boundary condition. So I think we, we, we have, uh, we can cover well the more common uh, conditions for upstream boundary condition in terms of sediment transport. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. Um, a reminder to everyone that this webinar uh, recording will be posted on the CSDMS website under education webinars. So if you wanna watch it again, you can. If your uh, friends and colleagues missed it and wanna see it, they can look it up there. It should be posted in a few days. And let's thank Davide again for a fantastic presentation. Thank you very much for inviting. Thank you.